Hello everybody, Shift3 again, and today I will be explaining what Hearthstone Mercenaries is. Well, without much explanation, the game is a simple old school RPG. Um, similar to maybe Raid Shadow Legends or Pokemon. So uh, what you will do is choose a skill that your character is gonna use return. And uh, after you have decided for all your characters, the game is gonna resolve the turn by start by activating the abilities from fastest to slowest that's literally what the game is and for me to explain even faster i would say let's just jump right into one uh, one bounty bounties are like the missions or uh, the the way you play the game so let's go right into a heroic bounty why not i will uh, i will make sure that i will play something that's Pretty easy here, just so that I go through it faster, but I might as well farm a bit. So here are the missions, like, uh, the starting, this is the first area that the game has, although in heroic mode the enemies are a bit stronger. And I will go into this fight in specific, because might as well farm a bit, because I care about uh, these resources here, old murky eye coins. I will explain what they are in a bit, but you don't really need to mind. The only thing I want to point out here is that every bounty, or so every mission, has different coins for you to get rewarded for, with to build up your characters. For example, if you want to build up Old Murky Eye, which is what I want to do, you go to this mission here and try to farm those coins. Either way, let's go into the fight right away and uh, I will explain the game in a bit. This is my team right now, half a Merc. And uh, as I said, these are the units I'm going to use. These are the units from which I use abilities to fight. So let's log in here and uh, start right away. The reason I want to explain this, uh, how the game is played to you, is because uh, because I'm live streaming. I'm live streaming about this time, maybe two hours after I upload this. But overall, I'm live streaming uh, about about this time. About, about the time I'm uploading the, my videos daily, that's also the time I will be uploading overall. Uh, live streaming is what I meant. So let's go into a fight here and uh, that will most likely be enough for me to explain what's happening. So, first of all, you see here this enemy is red and the others are grey. Uh, let's forget about grey because it doesn't really matter. Uh, red, the, the, the enemies that are colored and also your units are also colored. They have the classic uh, rock, paper, scissors format with uh, red, which is protectors, beating green, which is fighters, and fighters beating blue, which is mages, and mages in their turn also beat red. That's why you also see this crack whenever I go over the blue mages over here. Another way, to, if you want to remember it, it's uh, I think there are two ways. One would be that red is fire, fire beats grass, grass beats water, and water beats, beats fire. I mean, that's the simplest way to see it. Other, say, uh, other way to see it would be that uh, you cannot really assassinate a big bulky tank, which is the fighter, and uh, you you can control them with spells, I guess, but the assassins, the, 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 the green ones, the fighters always beat the mages because they just destroy them, I guess, but that would be the hard way to remember it. Either way, uh, this is the fight here. Let's go with a simple team. I have two teams here, but let's go with a simpler one. We might lose because I use the simpler one, but it doesn't really matter. We will go with Milhouse Manastorm to beat this uh, red one. We will go, you know what, let's go with double mages, just so we counter, you know, the red one. And then uh, for us to not get counter ourselves, I'm not going to use green, as green is countered from red, so I will use red myself. So might as well go with Ryan here. These are the characters I chose. You always choose three characters, and then the other three stay in the back. So... Uh, I press ready. This is just so that you can place them wherever you want. That might be important in case enemies have something that uh, cares about uh, adjacency. Maybe some skill that damages adjacent units or something. And then uh, here we go into the RPG game. So we have three characters. We can use their skills. Everybody has three skills. In the beginning you have one, but uh, after you level them up they start getting more skills. As I said, RPG, so you level them up as if they're Pokemon. The more you bring them into fights, the more levels they get. And uh, these are the skills you use. For example, Mana Storm here has a 2 damage to all. Which is pretty much nothing. As you can see, enemies have 31, 20, and 51 life. 10 damage to one target and also gain 3 arcane damage uh, for the rest of this fight. And then we've got Magic Missiles, which is uh, 3 times 5 to random enemies. We're obviously gonna go with the 10 damage here because it's the highest damage and this here is still in cooldown. Uh, we will choose the guy that takes double damage. 
you know, then we will also see what does the Murloc have. These skills are on cooldown, so we won't even care about them. You can read them if you want on your own time. It's a heal and it's damage per Morlock. And uh, well, then we have this here, plus uh, does 5 damage, which will be doubled because this guy has weakness to us, is weak to us, and also 3 health to Morlock, so that's himself. And then for, with uh, Ram here, we can go with Crusading Blow or we can go with Taunt. So instead of just going YOLO and choosing whatever, you can see what the enemies do only here, only in the PvE mode, and decide uh, after the fact. So this guy is going to be attacking. Attacking means that he's literally gonna slam his body onto some of mine. So his 9 attack over here, is, as you see, is gonna hit one of these three. And uh, my attack is also gonna hit him back. That's the, the classic card format of, uh, you know, attack hits defense and on opponent's attack hits your defense. That, will hap that happens when you attack. As you can see, uh, she also attacks an enemy, as it says over here. So if I use this, she will do 9 damage to something and take whatever the something has on its life. Uh, this guy is gonna deal 5 damage. Because it just says deal 5 damage, it means that it's gonna target whatever. You cannot really do anything about it. And then this guy is also gonna deal 5 damage. And then he's also have passives. This guy is taunt, so if I wanna attack, I'm forced to attack him. I think if I choose him, it says second, but it will not it will not attack it. It left me it let me choose, but it will attack the taunt enemy. It lets you choose here because there is a chance that uh, you will kill the taunt out. Uh, before so if there is a taunt and you want to most likely hit something else you could do this and uh, if the taunt is alive she's gonna attack the taunt if the taunt is dead at that point she will attack this thing um, on the other on the other side if you choose the taunt and the taunt is dead before she goes off she's gonna random something uh, yeah she's gonna target something at random so that's another part of strategy there and uh, you know what because i don't want this guy to hit the mages I will just go with a taunt here, and uh, we will go on. By the way, her taunt also gives her 10 life, and lasts for 2 turns, and her attack, um, if she gets a kill with it, with 9 damage, which is pretty low, uh, then she heals 10 life. And also she has another move, which is a heal. So, oh, I didn't quit to talk about the order. I'm gonna talk about the order in a bit. Now the moves go off from slowest to fastest, uh, from fastest to slowest. As you can see, enemies try to attack Melau's Mana Storm. And as you saw, I don't know, you have to go back and forth there because there were so much things I should have said. But uh, as you saw, Milhouse Master, instead of doing 10 damage, did 20. And he, instead of doing 5, did 10. So, once again here, we could either go with Arcane Explosion, doing 10 to this and 5 to those two. Or we can go with Arcane Bolt, killing only this thing. Um, to be honest, I would say, let's go with you do our uh, Morlock Missile here. You check what the enemies do. Fireball fireball and attack again she's already taunted so might as well go for the death blow and uh he should do this the reason being is the following let's uh, let's attack this thing uh first of all this uh she's gonna attack sixth now now it's time to talk about the turn order so as you see over the enemy moves here you see a six over exactly above the name of the move it says fireball above there's a six within like with wings and that means it has speed six the, the lower number the number the faster the move goes so this has speed four it's gonna go first as you see the game also calculates it this is only in pve by the way this is not in pvp and um yeah within normally when you have the name now the name the same number with an enemy it means that it's random who's gonna go first but within your team it depends on with what order you do your stuff so if I go first Arcane Missile onto this guy and then uh, Crushing Blow onto this guy, then that's the order that's going to happen. So theoretically speaking, he should do 5 damage to this, which is going to be doubled at 10 damage. She's going to be at 2, and then she's going to do an attack, kill this thing, and heal 10, herself, 10 health herself. And he's just going to do 13 damage to this. So let's see this uh, work out. Yep, 10 damage. Enemy attacked. As I said, it's random. Enemy got the roll again. Random. Now I got the roll. And now she got the roll. And he actually went first and she went second. Exactly like uh, I said it would, right? I think that's how I said it would. Might as well try another one. Speed 4 here. And he has speed 4. Let's try to get the first on him. He does his speed 4 attack. He does his speed 4 attack. So theoretically, Milhouse should go first. And uh, he's gonna do Fireball 9. Uh, for safety reasons, let's just taunt and heal. Actually, yeah, he's not gonna kill anything. So, the third, third, and between this third. Uh, what are they gonna do? They're just gonna damage. Yeah, this guy says death rattle, deal damage equal to this character's attack to random enemy. So, when this thing dies, it's gonna deal 10 damage to something at random. 
And this thing says at the end of each turn, gain plus one fire damage. And that's why they deal seven now from the five they did in the beginning. So theoretically, what should happen is Millhouse should go first. As I chose his for skill first. Then uh, Morgul should go second. Let's make double sure we did that. So first, second. Although it says question marks, it should go like I said. And uh, she's gonna attack third. And uh, pretty much not kill it, but it, she will try. Yep. Explosion. This is dead. This is gonna do 10 damage now. Randomly hit Mana Storm. He's gonna do 10. 5. He did 7 and she did 6. And as you saw, she also took 6 when she did 6 because this guy has 6 attack. So always keep in mind that... Uh, actually, let's go with speed 4. Speed 4. And I uh, might as well attack here. Enemy has speed 6. Fireball. He's never gonna attack. So once again, Mana Storm first as I actually used the skill first. And you go second. And we got the win. And that's pretty much the game. Literally, that's the game. We also get uh, XP for the track. For the Game Pass track, I guess. Their event track, whatever's running. And then after every fight, you get to choose uh, which skill, which upgrade you want to get. So it gives you one character at random from your six characters. And it tells you which one do you want to upgrade. By the way, also I forgot to mention that, uh, like... About uh, 20 seconds ago, you saw all the characters that I had in my team got some XP. And that makes your character stronger, the better, the more they go on. The more you use them. Passive has 3 attack for each other Murloc on the battlefield. Or uh, gain 4 attack, then attack an enemy, it can't heal this turn. Or cast one of this Merc's abilities twice. Let's go with cast one of this Merc's abilities twice. Uh, I'm not gonna continue this. I will, uh, I will just go back to explain more stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, now this got unlocked. This is the roguelike mode. This is the PvE mode. And as you see, you fight one in the beginning. It's always one in the beginning. And then you start splitting out uh, between paths. There is, There are always fights. Over at, above the fights, you can see the colors that they mainly have. So here it's going to be mostly green enemies. Here it's mostly going to be blue. So these guys are going to lose from your greens. And these guys are going to use lose from your reds. I'm talking with colors because it's easier to remember what beats what. So the grass is going to lose from your fire, so to speak. Then there is this thing, which is like an event. It says all protectors on both teams get around the moon. Protectors are the red guys. So if you go into this, you will buff every single protector. That might be that they always have taunt. Or that might be that they have plus one attack, plus attack, plus six attack, plus ten attack. These are buffs for all the red units. Yours and enemies included. So if I went here, then this fight here having... Mostly red enemies, as you see, would be a harder fight as they will all get buffed from this thing. And this also has spikes, which means it's an elite fight. Elite fights give you a lot more XP and also give you better items like the item I got at the end of the fight. And then this thing here revives one of your characters because if you lose a character within a fight, you lose him for the rest of the run until you beat the boss. So this would revive one of them. And then after you beat the boss, you also have access to this treasure, which will give you, uh, I think because this is heroic, it's going to give you five uh, different coins with the three of the five being the, the units that are represented here. Now, what are the coins you might ask? Let's go out of here. I don't need to complete that thing. What are the coins you might ask? You know, first of all, where do you find coins? As I, as I told you, you find coins in expeditions, so in missions, so to speak. You know, in a run. After you win a run, you gain coins or from quests. I did a quest, like in this run, within this run, I did a quest. I did the deal 100 damage using arcane explosions. And this thing will give me 50 coins for Millhouse Mana, Mana Storm and 20 random coins. So let's claim them. I got 50 Mana Storm coins and 20 whatever this guy's coins which we don't really care about right now. And uh, to use those coins, you have to go over here at the, I guess, tavern. Go to the character you care to upgrade. For example, Millhouse Mana Storm, which I just got coins for, which should be over here. And uh, if I go into the character, you can see his three skills, his equipment, which I haven't unlocked yet, uh, which is pretty much upgrades within upgrades. And, uh, and that's it. And the character and his stats, I guess. And uh, for the use of coins, if you go over a skill, you can see use 50 of the 77 coins to upgrade arcane explosions. Instead of doing 2 damage, it will do 4 damage. Or uh, magic missiles, greater arcane missiles. Or 50 coins, instead of doing 5, it will do 9 per hit. 
or Arcane Bolt. I already have upgraded Arcane Bolt twice. As you see, it's level 3 here. Normally, it was doing like 4 damage and giving us plus 1 Arcane damage. Then it went to 7 and plus 2, and now it's at 10 and plus 3. And if I level it one more time, it will be 11 and plus 3. So, as you can see, the next upgrade is really bad. If, if you hear to the numbers I said, uh, from 4 to 7 to 10 damage, and the Arcane damage was from 1 to 2 to 3, and then the next upgrade is 11. So, just one more damage. This is like the most non-valuable upgrade so you should also point at um pay attention to which upgrades are good and which are not uh, here for example i guess i would upgrade the arcane explosion uh, i don't think i would upgrade the gradle missile although this takes more than or gets more damage overall the thing is that this thing can be used once every two turns so overall the dps of this is not really good and uh, also it has a speed nine that means it's really slow and until the two turns pass, if the enemies already are attacking Milhouse Mana Storm and you then use this, he will die before he does anything. So might as well upgrade the Arcane Explosion. Uh, I mean, this might not be a good upgrade per se, but I'm just doing it just so that I showcase you guys what an upgrade looks like. And that's what it looks like. And now this character, wherever I use them, in any mode I use them whatsoever, PvE, PvP, whatever, he's gonna have these stats. And then you buffed. Um, the new buffed skill and also for the equipment here which i didn't really explain uh, you have to do the three things so complete task 2 complete task 7 and reach 30 level i haven't done any of these completing uh reaching level 30 is most likely going to happen first depending on if you always use the same characters or not uh, if you don't use the, all the characters at the same time, then all the time the, new, the same characters, then you're most likely gonna unlock the equipment. And what the equipments are here is, uh, yeah, the game tried to explain us there, but I skipped it. Uh, equipments are... Uh you use you pretty much they upgrade one of the three skills the character has here for example glader arcane missile targets the lowest health enemy so instead of being random it literally tries to snipe enemies that's really good over here we got a mana rod arcane bolt gains plus one arcane damage more but has one cooldown i mean i think if you upgrade this because these things are also upgradable if you upgrade this in the end it becomes plus four arcane damage and one more cooldown which is really good because instead of getting plus 3 arcane damage um, every turn, you can get plus 7 every 2 turns, which is a lot better because might as well press arcane bolt once and arcane explosion after that, and then again arcane bolt second time, and then arcane explosion again, instead of doing arcane, 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 arcane. So I guess that would be better in my opinion. And over here, the third one is arcane explosions deal more damage. I mean, you might as well go for this if you're gonna just spam arcane explosions. Depends on what you wanna do. These also might be... Depending on what you, game you're playing. For example, if you play PvP, you might want this to snipe out enemies that are hiding be uh, behind taunts. While uh, if you play against the computer, AI or whatever, you might want to do this because the enemy might not snipe Mana Storm while you build up your arcane power. You might even want to do this if you want to farm real quickly and just go arcane explosions and just destroy everything and farm as fast as possible. You could go with all in into arcane damage. And uh, the thing I just explained right now is true for every character so every character has his coins every character has his upgrades here he has 122 coins i'm keeping my money here to upgrade for example this thing as you see oh i actually can upgrade this thing i think i want to upgrade this thing yep that's why i'm keeping money here because i want to get the plus two health so on every single character you have to decide what you want to upgrade and where you want to spend your coins to make your character stronger while also using them in battles to level them up so they first of all unlock one of their equipment and also because every time you level up a character, they will gain either health or damage. And uh, maybe because this guy's a mage, damage might not be important to you. But that's not really true because when enemies attack, you want to strike them back for as much damage as possible. And there are also skills that use uh, your characters to attack with them. For example, this guy might not be able to attack himself. Uh, when I say attack, I don't mean damage. I mean literally attack, like throw his body onto the enemy. But there is another unit here. Where is he? Uh, over here, for example, old murky eye. That says attack an enemy, one other friendly murlox attacks it. And uh, guess what? That guy I just show you, this guy over here, is a murloc. So I have a murloc that makes the other murloc attack. Therefore, even mages are important to have damage. And when enemies retaliate, when enemies attack you, you want to also retaliate for as, as much damage as possible. But I'm digressing here. Uh, I think that's it overall with the gameplay. Uh, now for over here, everything that's over here. First of all, there is PvP. 
you can go over into the arena and just go do a PvP fight. There is a score which gives you rewards every 1,000 you climb. And there is also a win per day uh, reward you get. First, it's at 1 win, you gain a chest which has coins in it. And then at 2, you get another chest with coins in it. At 3, I don't know, it's a chest, but I'm not sure if it gives coins or something else. I didn't do 3, the, the counter reset. That's also why I have a 0 out of 2 here. Because uh, the moment I was playing, I was going for the 0 out of 3. Um, I... I got the win for the next day. Either way, also not important. So that's it for that. I already explained bounties at the very beginning. Then we got uh, missions here, which also reward you with coins. And there are also the main quests, which reward you with mercenaries pack and coins too. Now mercenaries pack, something really important here to explain real quick. Mercenaries pack, what you do with them is uh, you open them. No, who would have thought? And there are coins within them. And also there is always one... Um, mercenary so one character is always within a pack until you unlock every single character of that ra rarity so if for example if you open a pack and the rarity that happened to drop is rare then if you don't have every single rare character then you will unlock one rare character if uh, the drop is epic you will unlock one epic one if it's a uh, legendary you will unlock a legendary one you can also craft them on your own for example, here on crafting, you don't even need to press the crafting button. If you have enough coins for a character you don't have, for example, here I have Goof Runnington. I have 103 coins for him. Uh, I can craft him and then I will unlock the character by doing that. I'm not going to do that because this guy is a rare. Might as well get him from a pack. Why would I waste coins? Might as well waste coins on his skills, you know. Because at some point I will have unlocked every single character with packs. So there's no reason to spend coins, at least in my opinion. Maybe if you really care about the character... Maybe then. But uh, the most important part with crafting is, if, for example, if you like somebody, let's say you like, uh, let's say you like the, the, one, the one I just showed you, you know, let's say, say you like, um, where is he? Let's say you like old Murkii and you don't get him. You want him as fast as possible. You want to unlock him as fast as possible. Where? You go over here at the bounty board. You go and find the mission that he is in. Uh, well, I can't show it anymore because I'm in this run, but uh, I don't think it matters. Uh, you, you just go to the mission which gives you the coins of the character you want to unlock and just spam that mission. The more you f you do the mission a thousand times, I mean, it's going to be like ten times, you will get the coins that you need to unlock the character and you will just unlock the character by paying. For example, do you want Ildan Storm Rage? Well, tough luck, he needs 500 coins to unlock because he's legendary, but you can actually unlock him by just spamming the mission again and again and again and again. Nothing is preventing you from doing that. You can just play this mission that gives you Illidan coins, um, I guess 50 times, if, if you are unlocking get 10 coins per fight, and uh, you will get Illidan at some point, so that's how you unlock characters, if you wanna go full on free to play, and wanna get like 6 characters you care about, then just do that, you're not forced to unlock everything, the only thing you need is 6 team teammates, um, if, if from those 6 teammates you want, you already got for free like 3 of them, then you just have to farm for 3 characters, and then you can build the team you want, there is a, a lot of grind in this game, but uh, at least you have access to everything uh, without being forced to buy only packs. At least that is something, I guess. Uh, over here at the workshop, you can upgrade your buildings. As you see, I have upgraded almost everything. The only thing I don't haven't upgraded yet is the campfire. The campfire gives you, as I said, access to questing. So the next upgrade is going to give me a sixth quest slot. Normally you start at four and then uh, you can upgrade it twice. Uh, for upgrades, they cost gold. I can show it right here. They cost like Hearthstone gold, the, the, the game that... The currency that the game uses for pretty much everything Hearthstone related, which is pretty bad at my in my opinion. But it's really easy to gather up the first big batch of gold. So you, you need 900 gold to pretty much unlock every single thing. Uh, I don't think you're forced to upgrade the campfire level, the last level of campfire, which cost 400, which is like the worst one. Uh, other than that, it's gonna cost you 500 gold to unlock everything. I already have 500 in the bank. I mean, when I opened this old account up, I had already... The game gave me like two or three quests, and I instantly hit 400 gold, about 400 gold. So, I mean, you're gonna be forced to play Hearthstone, but um, it's not really that excruciating. I mean, the game... You might not like the game, but it's gonna take you about one hour, maybe two, to get all the quests done, and then you will have enough coins to be self-sufficient here and uh, you're not even forced to do that right away you can play a bit here first and then go play hearthstone either way uh i think i covered everything then there is a shop obviously which you can buy packs from packs from packs cost like 100 gold i'm not gonna buy a pack right now 
Uh, actually, no, I'm not gonna buy a pack because I'm live streaming and I'm gonna buy a pack at, uh, on the live stream, I guess, uh, if I do it even because I'm playing free to play. Either way, that is going to be it. So if you guys liked the whole guide thing and if you want to see me play, then just come and join this, the live stream. Maybe subscribe to the channel so that you get a notification or I guess the home screen show you shows you that I'm live streaming. I don't know. Do as you wish. If you like the video, drop a like, helping out the channel and also... Yeah, I think that's going to be it. If you want to tell me something, if I missed something, just comment down below. If you want me to explain something to you, comment down below. I'm going to explain everything. Uh, you can also look in the comments if the game, if, if this video is going to be all, like one month old, might as well go to the comments and see what other people ask. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to do another video covering what team I'm using at my live stream right now, just so you get up to snuff. But um, you can just join the live stream and see what team I'm using or just ask me at the live stream and I might explain you there. So, yeah, I think I covered everything. Maybe I didn't cover the difference between Heroic and Normal Difficulty. Well, as far as I know, the, the difference is that obviously Heroic is harder, but also Normal Difficulty has uh, gives you three rewards. So only the three coins depicted, while Heroic gives you three rewards, the coins depicted, and uh, another two random coins uh, for free, pretty much. Uh, when you beat it, that's what I'm trying to say here. And uh, that's that's the game pretty much. You you use your characters, you level them up the more you use them, and um, they all have skills that damage the enemies. So it's literally an RPG. It also has the gacha mechanics. By opening packs, you always get the character that you don't have. After you unlock all the characters you don't have, now nah, that's something small I forgot to showcase. After you unlock every single character you don't have, then the game starts giving you... Um, portraits that's pretty much skins for the characters as you see for this character i have this golden portrait with her being happy and also the default portrait so this is the normal portrait portrait that you would have on this character and uh, yeah i think this time this covers everything so uh, yeah that's going to be it hope you hope i see you guys on the live stream just uh, when you join just say hi maybe i <laughs> i will most likely say hi back either way that's going to be it Thanks for watching, everybody, and see you guys around.